Hello everyone and welcome back to my Beyond History series in Kerbal Space Program 1.1.3 and in this episode we begin with MAPSAT 1A as you can see in orbit around Saturn and we've got a dummy maneuver to pay attention to it as we approach things and our goal overall of course is to clear up all of these um, outer planet missions so that we can move on to focusing on Mars colonization in a new season I suppose our three king proposed. So the first season was my initial Realism Overhaul series in 1.1.3 and uh, that carried us into the point where I thought we were going beyond the stuff that happened throughout space history and so I called the second season I suppose Beyond History and then we're going to focus on Mars colonization in season 3. So that's the situation and we just need to clear this up so that perhaps I can reconfigure the install a little bit, maybe update to KSP 1.2.2 and uh, hopefully things will be a little bit better in that case. Now taking a look at the situation here, uh, we are in a very loose orbit around Saturn. We are approaching our apoapsis and we would really like to hit um, Titan with this because this is a map sat and we can scan for resources if we get into orbit around Titan. So let me do some fiddling around with the maneuver node and see what I can come up with. Okay, that was a relatively painless plot. Uh, we are going to spend 178.8 meters per second and we are going to get a Titan encounter here. Uh, it's sort of an oblique encounter, not at the periapsis, which we would like. Of course, our periapsis was nowhere near Titan. And we have to make sure, of course, that the resulting orbit doesn't bring us into a crash course with Saturn, which it doesn't. It actually lifts our orbit up a bit, which is good. That's what we want. It also flattens our orbit with respect to Titan. And the green orbit there you can see at a better inclination, though not perfect inclination with respect to Titan. So we're probably going to have to fly by a few times. I've already checked and it would take about 5,500 meters per second to get into orbit around Titan like this. We don't have a lander portion. Uh, we're not trying to uh, put something into the atmosphere of Titan. We're just an orbiter trying to scan a Titan for resources. So we really can't use Titan's atmosphere to our benefit right now. And remember that Titan's atmosphere is at 600 kilometers. So we can't really get too much of a gravitational benefit from Titan. We can't get any closer than this, basically. Otherwise, we will be passing through the atmosphere of Titan and probably we'll blow up, or at least we don't want to risk that. But uh, for now, we can do this burn and we will have an approach to Titan. And we'll have to do that a few times before actually managing to make orbit around Titan. But we've got 3,000 meters per second and uh, right now this pass will put us in a position so that we would require 5,000 in order to get into orbit. So a few more passes will probably bring that down a bit. Of course, with each pass, our apoapsis around Saturn goes down. So the cost of making corrections increases because uh, the, the corrections tend to be inclination corrections and the closer you are to Saturn, the worse that is. So it's all a balance. At a certain point, we are going to be so low over Saturn that it's not going to be any good to try and make a correction at apoapsis. At that point, we better be close enough to make orbit around Titan. This would require actually rotating the thing in order to settle the fuel down, which is fine. Seems to be working. All right, ignition. Okay, well, it's drifting away from us. And this is pretty fiddly. Uh, well, there, there's an indication of an approach. We have unlimited ignitions with this, but it's obviously not as ideal an approach as I would like. And it's flickering like crazy. Well, it does basically what we want, and it looks like the resulting orbit actually brings our periapsis down, which I don't need. But, well, I mean, that's still up compared to our original orbit, so that's, I guess, we'll take it. Um, we really should get closer to Titan, though. Mm, but right now, we're just going to slip under it. And we have vapor and feed lines. Okay. Uh, let's let's just take this for now. That's so indecisive. I don't know what to do with it. So, we'll add an alarm ahead of that. 
Uh, all right, well, hmm. let's make a dummy maneuver. And add an alarm for that. All right, at least that'll be more decisive. There's an Ares Pod G2 arriving at Mars. That took a while. But that's the next thing we're going to jump to. And then MapSat 2A around Jupiter. And then back here for this approach to Titan. And we'll see how that shapes up. All right, here we are with the Ares Pod G2 and a light lander. And so we've got sort of a complicated situation. If you recall, the Ares Pod G2 had some sort of issue. I don't remember what the issue was. But we had to use the launch of the light lander to help uh, boost them to Mars together. And yeah, so now they're sort of joined at the hip, but that's not going to work for Mars entry. Uh, yeah, definitely not going to. Well, I mean, in theory, it's possible that it could work with Mars entry. We'd, of course, um, retract the solar panels and use this heat shield and maybe it'd work or maybe it'd tumble, tumble to oblivion. So. Uh, it all depends on how the balance is, and probably the balance is not so good. So, we're going to have to separate them. And in practical terms, if we separate them, only one of them is going to get the benefit of our focus as it goes through Mars' atmosphere, because they're otherwise going to be going through at the same time. I think the best solution is to save the Ares Pod G, but because it's just more complicated, more costly, and uh, risk the light lander. With the light lander, what we're going to do is try to do a manual capture if it doesn't capture on its own. But we'll let it pass through the atmosphere. Uh, I don't know what's going to happen with it, but we're not going to be paying direct attention to it. It's possible we'll be in physics range, which may or may not be good for it. But, um, right, obviously. So what we're going to do is undock now. I don't remember what the problem with the Ares Pod G2 launch was though. We may belatedly figure that out. I don't know if I should... Uh, I'm going to retract one panel because the other panel, if it does go through the atmosphere, the other panel is going to blow up. <laughs> so I want to have one panel. Uh, it can recharge on one panel as you can see. And... I'm going to have it lock surface negative relative velocity. If it's in render range, uh, when we pass through the atmosphere, it will it will automatically orient like that with smart ASS. So that's what I want. And the periapsis is shaping up to be a safe enough periapsis. So okay, you don't have to keep doing anything. Okay, it should be fine-ish. Maybe. Okay, uh, otherwise it has uh, its fuel locked up here. So the only fuel that's exposed is this, and that's supposed to be used for capture anyway. All right, so it's going to do that thing. And if it survives passing through the atmosphere, after we deal with the Ares Pod G2, we will use this fuel to try and capture it further. And maybe we can make a manual orbit out of that. But for now, my main interest is going to be with this. And my notes indicate that we are coming in. OK, we definitely don't want the surface velocity right now. We came into the SOI with more velocity than on previous attempts. The last time we tried to bring an Ares Pod G2 in, uh, SOI entry was at 5,748 meters per second. And uh, it weighed a little bit less than it does right now. And we were at 38 kilometers on the periapsis and got into a five hour orbit, which is a fairly low orbit. So this time I'm going to aim for either 37 or 36. I, my, I, I don't know about 36. Maybe 37 will be all right. I'm only going to give this one try. There's a chance that when we change to the Mars colonization series, this won't survive because some part will be misconfigured or something like that. But on the whole, it's just a bunch of procedural parts and the good old Gemini lander engine, so I don't see that being a problem. Well, it sure seems that doing this correction is gonna have us tend towards the direction of the light lander. That could have positive or negative effects. 
we will see. Uh, let me target it so that we know how close we're approaching it. Uh, that's not good. All right, I, I concede we'll need some of this fuel to, I don't want to go back and forth here. 36.74. Okay, I'll take 36.74. And it seems like we still stay a fair distance away. My mouse cursor, cursor is a little bit weird right now. We should be safe as far as Lightliner is concerned. Let's see. As you can see in Kerbal Alarm Clock, we're unlocking the technology called colonization, so that's appropriate. But I expect to have to take like 10 years to get through all this. You can see the Delta IV Pluto and Neptune fly by in, you know, within 10 years. The, the Exo Moon Explorer, I don't know. Uh, well, that'll be like more than 15 years. I don't know if we want to take care of that. 15 years is still just 1998, so maybe the Mars colonization series should start out at the year 2000 or something. Relative velocity is very different between us and the light lander now. Our uh, velocity at periapsis is 6,300. That may be okay, we'll find out. That time we made it into a five hour orbit, we were at 5,660 meters per second at periapsis. Well, the heat and fury have died down. We, we actually got quite a lot of charred up later this time too. Much more than usual, but still not a big problem. Uh, but uh, we are still within the atmosphere. I don't know if we're going to have to use some fuel to actually capture. We'll see. Yeah, we probably will. So you should have been much lower than 36.7 kilometers. Tough to be too much lower than that. Yeah, okay, I don't think this is going to help us out any. Let's decouple. Let's point... Well, let's unlock this stuff. That seems to be all of them. Well, that'll be good enough for a start. We're going to have to do some further business with it, but let's leave it be like that in a 28-day orbit. I'm not gonna ask it to do any more. It's recharging and we will deal with it further at Apoapsis. Now to the light lander which is probably ways away and not in a good position. I don't know if we can make it into orbit with it. Probably not. Okay well the heat shield is going to obstruct these things, and we don't need it anyway, so jettison. Ignition. I don't think we have any f other fuel hidden anywhere. Oh, wait, um... This tank should have priority, it shouldn't be... Oh well. Um, let's bring these up. Okay, and decouple. Okay, yeah. Well, I mean... Yeah. This, this wasn't going to work out for us. So, unfortunately, the light lander is lost. I don't know if we could observe a biosample. Oh, yeah, we can. Let's transmit that. <laughs> we got something out of it. We got something out of it. Okay, well. But at least we got the Ares Pod G into orbit, and we'll try and get into a better position later on. Um, yeah. I think there was already another light lander in orbit anyway and we've got other assets of course so we have some development here in uh, in orbit around Mars and hopefully we can carry that on to the Mars colonization series so back to MAPSAT 2A and 1A where we are going to try and continue try to get them into orbit around moons of Jupiter and Saturn so that we can scan for resources that's more of a long-term thing but uh, we could get some science out of that and the science I hope to carry on into the next series as well. Okay here with MAPSAT 2A we are attempting to flatten our orbit with respect to Io and really to get a zero degree inclination with respect to Io. Io is probably the most helpful moon in order to lower our orbit around Jupiter if we want to do multiple flybys of it and I would like to get this MAPSAT into orbit around it that would be 
good. Io is a tough one to get into orbit around. It might be easier to get one into orbit around one of the other moons, but certainly Io's help is is the best thing for us. So let's do this. Unfortunately, we can't just focus on this. Uh, Mavsat 1A still needs our attention as well, as well as Aerispod G2, which will be approaching its apoapsis, so we have to bounce around between these. 0 0 0.03, 0.02, 0.01. Ah, oh, okay, well, that was too much to ask. 0.01 will be fine. We need it to pull our orbit down. That's the important thing. If uh, if we spend 160 meters per second, it doesn't pull our orbit down by more than 160 meters per second's worth. That's not good enough. Now, at least it looks like the encounter is happening on the right side of our orbit, right? We want the encounter to happen on the periapsis side. That's good. And since we're already in line with Io, we shouldn't have any residual inclination. We don't want to get any of that. And we want to get it as close as possible. If, if we were to try and get into orbit around Io right now, how bad would that be? 6,755. So we, we've got a ways to go, but with a few passes it might be doable. And you can see uh, that pass around Io brings us down from there to there. But it's that orbit that gives us that uh, cost to get into orbit around Io. So we're going to have to be much lower than that. All right, well, uh, this seems like a good maneuver then. And it happens before that maneuver node with Mapsat 1A. So let's get to this maneuver node and handle this. One reason it's nice to use Io is because its orbital period is so short. We can get fairly frequent encounters with it. Can't quite see the resulting inclination. I wanted that to not change, but let's see. How about if I just unset target, reset target? Seems like it stays zero. So we are directly equatorial to Io. And let's add that SOI change, whoop, which is in seven days. Okay, well, that'll suit us. So back to MAPSAT 1A. Well, any hope I had of this mission's orbit settling down in the meantime doesn't seem to have taken place. Uh, so let's just follow it in and hope that the Titan encounter actually happens. Um, I would like it closer than that, but can we... Okay, that's probably close enough. Wait, that's too close. <laughs> right, remember, 600 kilometer atmosphere. I have to remind myself of that too. Okay, first flyby of Titan, safe altitude. Look at that. And what science do we have on here anyway? Well, this is supposed to be a map set, so probably just analyze telemetry. Well, we've done that high over Titan before, so I don't think I put the other instruments. Okay, so just flying by, unfortunately. Now, what can we do to help things out after we fly by? Well, let's let's go through Titan SOI first. Make sure Titan is set as target. Oh, I mean, it uh, looks like we're pretty close to... Oh no, that, that's just right now, okay. Uh, so, periapsis. Let's see if we can pull our orbit down. There we go, that's... Okay, there was something going on there. 29 days. It's not really where I want to encounter Titan, but let's see. Okay, now does that lift our orbit or bring it down? Seems like it brings it down. Not by much, though. And again, there's the problem where it seems to be bringing this side down, too. Because of where Titan is. But okay, I guess we will do this, and the node is before the next mission that needs our attention, so let's do this burn close to Saturn. Uh, that Saturn periapsis is close, but um, it's not going to be much of a problem. Maybe we should just directly, let's see what would happen if we, if we didn't do this at all and just tried to lift to Titan's orbit at this point, after having corrected inclination for the most part. 
Maybe that's better. Once again, the pass seems to bring our periapsis down, which is countering what we're doing up here. Let's not do that combo then. Let's see. Let's lift it up even more. All the way to Titan's orbit. How much does that cost? A thousand. Okay. And let's say we do a correction here. How much is that one? That seemed like quite a lot. Oh, only 1,124. I think we can do this combination of three maneuvers. Okay, let's say we have that. And all those maneuvers sum up to be... It's about 1,100 there. So about 1,250, let's say. No, sorry, 2,250. Okay, and then how much to make orbit? Let's throw a little inclination thing there just to complicate matters. Let's do the inclination thing over here instead. <laughs> yeah, that's better. A hundred there. And that, sh that should be it. So that's a series of five maneuvers though. Let's get rid of these. These aren't going to happen exactly as plotted anyway. So the first maneuver is in 27 days, which gives us enough time to do other things first. And that will be all the way out at apoapsis here. So add that alarm. And back to Aries Pod G2, which we are just trying to get into a full orbit around Mars. Now, of course, with this mission losing the heat shield as we did, it's going to complicate the whole bringing it down business. But if we get into a low orbit first, it should still be possible to land it. We'll probably have to top it off with fuel and everything. But because we were forced to dump the heat shield in order to make orbit around Mars, uh, we have lost some of our capability with this. But still, uh, we can make orbit. Okay, that will do the trick. And of course, if push comes to shove, we can still use this as a light lander. So it can double in that sort of service as well. It has that technical capability. So we've taken care of Aries Pod G2 here. And now we go back to uh, MapSat 2A approaching IO. Okay, here we are on the flyby of IO. I believe we've probably done most of the science around it. And this probably doesn't have much science to do. Again, it's a ScanSat sort of thing. So we need to get into a polar orbit around something eventually. And there we go. Uh, altitude 79 kilometers. There's IO. Analyze telemetry. Well, no, we can do analyze telemetry. High over IO is new. Let's keep this up then. We'll check on it as we get to our closest approach. That's pretty close. Analyze telemetry. Just above Io's Highlands. Very good. I did queue up some extra technology to be unlocked while we we're doing all these missions. Make sure we're making use of the time like that. And let's check, uh, oh, we do, not, we, do not, we do not have biome information there. How about on landing? Well, it still says Highlands. No, oh, Midlands. Okay, let's do it again. Analyze telemetry. Transmit. Lowlands. Analyze telemetry. Ah, we're, well, it says just about, well, we must have done that before. All right. Okay, I think I think that's about it. So we're gonna be on the way out and then we'll see what we can do as the next step for this mission. I mean if we straight up lowered our orbit right now, it would take too much. As we expected. Alright, that will bring us down a bit. A minor 32.7 meter per second burn and that will be the next thing we do so let's just get to it 
Okay, selling the fuel down. Oop, oh, RCS on, selling the fuel down. And ignition. There we go. Uh, no, 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 no. Ah, too close. What does that look like? So that's our resulting orbit in purple there. That's good. And let's say we, we end up in that orbit. How much delta V then does it take to get to Io's orbit? Still too much. But, you know, we're getting closer and everything. It was only a uh, 32 meter per second correction, and we probably benefited by about 500 meters per second, or maybe a little bit less than that. It's going to take a lot of flybys of Io to make this happen, but at least it is a solid flyby of Io. Let's give ourselves an hour ahead of time. Okay, back to MapSat 1A around Saturn. Okay, well, for this mission, we now have a Titan or bust sort of situation. And so we're going to be doing this burn, and then it's either we're going to make orbit around Titan or we're going to be in trouble. So, node, because the combined maneuvers that we've got planned is just enough and just about what we have. Okay, ignition. Gonna take us some time to do a thousand meters per second here. Okay, well that'll have to do there. Let's see. So then at periapsis, then we're gonna have to wait until we do that MAPSAT 2A thing. We are going to pull our orbit down. I suppose we could wait around for Titan instead of doing that much all at the same time. But it'll make me feel better to have it a little bit more resolved, so. Uh, once again, we seem to be quite equatorial about this. That looks promising, doesn't it? I mean, practically in orbit already. Actually, that, that puts it in orbit, even though it's not a burn at periapsis. 459, huh? And then we can use whatever's left over to bring its orbit down. Not a big problem. Okay, so we'll do this burn. But that's in 21 days, so we'll have to wait on it. Back, back to MAPSAT 2A. We're gonna get these things done. We're gonna get these things done. Well, at least we're going to get the, the, the Titan one done. I'm not entirely sure we're going to get the Io one into orbit right now. Okay, once again, we're just going to fly by. And then after we fly by, we're going to readjust. So flying by Io again, hopefully not bumping into anything. We're going to have to tilt its orbit so that we can get into a polar orbit with this one as well. Oh, there's a Callisto encounter. Huh. Well, but it's going to cost 800 to bring our orbit down like that. It's sort of going to mess up our inclination with Io right now. And it's going to mess up our periapsis here. No, let's not do that. Such a weird angle. Let's say out there we lift our orbit finally. We really aren't tangent to Io's orbit, and that would be the best thing. Okay, well that's pretty close, and let's see how much it takes to get into orbit here now. 5,500. So we're basically doing like 400, 500 each pass. Okay, and we're spending about 50 to do it this time. All right, uh, six days, that's in five days, so this will be second. Back to Saturn. This is why they would have two different teams working on this. <laughs> okay, ignition. Interesting that the plume is sort of offset on this one. Didn't notice that before. 
So have to see what's going on here. Titan periapsis 193. Okay, that will do 20 days until we get to set, uh, Titan SOI and we can do that burn to make orbit around Titan. Add alarm. So we get one more shot at MapSat 2A before that. And well, we seem to have an encounter with IO. That's a good start. It's not a nice close encounter with IO, and it's getting further away. Get back here. Up oh, too close. Okay, stop. 73 kilometers. 70 kilometers has proven to be good to us. And it brings our orbit down to there. That encounter seems to be in 22 days, which is just after that. So that is what our alarm will be. And finally, can we get MAPSAT 1A into orbit around Titan already? It's drawing some pretty interesting orbits with this one. Haven't quite seen that pattern before. Oh, we'll actually have to check up on Uranus Ambassador before we go back to MAPSAT 2A. Interesting. Okay, so here we are. Let's just do the plotted maneuver as indicated and hope that that works as it should. So where's Titan? There's Titan. We're pretty far out from Titan. Titan's got a big sphere of influence. But that's good because that helps us with the inclination correction to get us into polar orbit. We're only at a 17 degree inclination right now. It would be cheaper to do this further out, but I just want to go with what's plotted for simplicity's sake. Inclination going up quickly. All we really need is uh, polarish inclination and uh, periapsis and apoapsis that are solid. Well, there's the periapsis, but we need it above 600 kilometers. And preferably a good altitude for scanning, of course. Up, 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 up. We've passed the node. And 86 degrees is fine on the inclination, I believe. We've only got 223 meters per second left, but we can pull the orbit down with that. Hopefully, it'll be in a low enough orbit to satisfy the scanner. But we'll do what we can. So on to periapsis. What does the scanner say? Perform oral survey. A thousand five hundred kilometers is the highest. Oh joy. Well, it doesn't look like this is gonna get just barely not quite right. Didn't realize the max was a thousand five hundred. I may have to contemplate loosening the restriction. On type. Well, I mean, our next season is going to be completely focused on Mars, more or less, so maybe maybe we'll just let this one go. But those altitudes definitely don't take into consideration the fact that Titan has a 600 kilometer atmosphere. I don't know if the orbital survey is necessary or we're, whether we can just do this, I mean, just do let the scanner do its thing with ScanSat, right? This is probably not the right planet. Um, celestial body Titan. Well, we're sure not scanning anything right now. Resources or yeah, it doesn't work with ScanSat. It has to be the orbital the survey thing. Well, maybe just an extra pass around Titan to get its help would have been sufficient. Or maybe I shouldn't have done as much of a burn at, uh, at periapsis as I did and just waited until we got in Titan SOI before doing the burn to orbit. A lot of possibilities. But 
somewhat disappointing that we didn't get it low enough. And yeah, you're not gonna be fooled by that, are you? Nope, nope. Okay, well anyway, we got this into Orbit Around Titan, but it's not in a good enough Orbit Around Titan. Hopefully we'll do better with Io, but I'll save that for the next episode where we're going to have a slew of even higher flung missions, Uranus, Pluto, well this Callisto map sad is not too far, but that's a long time away. Big gap between this Jovian Demon and that Callisto map sat, but I guess that'll be some sort of downtime for us. Anyway, well with this partial achievement. I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.